This is episode number 350 of the Inner Fight Podcast, where we are answering your questions. Welcome back to another edition of the Inner Fight Podcast. My name is Marcus Smith, and with me, Andre Hude, to host for you today, listeners Q&A. We've been getting loads and loads of questions in, and we're looking forward to answering them in today's show. So no matter where you are in the world, thanks for tuning in. Let's jump into today's show. Andre, they've been coming thick and fast. People have been scribbling them on the board. We've also got some via other methods, social media, yes. Instagram. And that's actually where I want to kick off this question. And it's kind of, it's from, it's from a guy's Instagram name. If you want to check him out, if you want to see who's asking such a question, it's from a gentleman called John Fudge, 28. J-O-N-F-U-D-G-E-28 on Instagram. And John says, question for the podcast. Why do CrossFit.com publish a really short daily workout when every CrossFit gym programs longer workouts and it's generally accepted that an hour is the length of time for a decent, intense workout? Apologies for the long-winded question. I actually think that's not a very long-winded question at all. I think yeah. it's a very good question. I don't... F- no, if I agree on that, like well, that I, assumption that they I do. do short workouts. I mean, I do. Wait, do you read CrossFit.com? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, exactly. You need to read it more often. Okay, I'll tell you something. They they used to do it a lot. Now they do it less. Okay. I remember two thousand and five, two thousand and six. Workout of the day on CrossFit.com. It was one dash one dash one dash one until there was seven ones. Mm. Seven singles. Bench press. And that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was pretty much like John. And I said to myself, why do CrossFit.com publish a really short daily workout? And as times went on, they put their hero workouts in. It is constantly varied. When I did the level one and there was Yami Tikkanen on the course. There was Pat Sherwood on the course. This was probably the most, when they talk about programming, this yeah. was probably the most talked about topic. But CrossFit still do it. And in 2012, it was actually played into my hand. 2012, I flew down to Australia, landed in Brisbane, 6 o'clock in the morning, got picked up by a friend, went to a CrossFit gym, and they were doing the workout of the day from CrossFit.com. Really? And it was six doubles of jerk. You can get a lot of people through your gym in one day if you do that. (laughs) (laughs) 15-minute classes? But this is the thing, mate, and I think this is this is almost the answer to the question. And this was some of the challenges that people were putting out all those years ago on my Level 1 course is like it wasn't really Fonning hadn't really started dominating then but you know he I think he was around and t- people like Kalipa were just coming into it definitely Miko Salo was, was was out there sort of more of the old school guys and you know the question was are these guys following CrossFit.com and the answer is <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah they followed the whole week in one day <laughs> <laughs> yeah they do but I, I think that's where I, I, I there's not really a definitive answer in Back in those days, they said that uh, Greg Glassman and Dave Castro still programmed the workout in CrossFit.com. There was never really any what I'd call s- s- obvious structure coming through it. No. But so that's sort of s- what they want, yeah? Well, and this was the thing. It's like, well, okay, guys, you're putting out a program and there's no structure and it's not helping people to prepare for the CrossFit Games. And they would just turn around and they say, well, it's constantly varied. <laughs> so, but I, you know, I, I also think you know when you put out an online program for loads of people. I mean, hundreds yeah. of thousands of people. Even though back in the day, it might not have been for that many people. You have to be super careful with yeah. what you put. They can't just put like crazy volume and crazy yeah. movements. Like, you know, our ninety fivers is gonna go on CrossFit a common hit in their home home gym, and yeah. they're just gonna get injured. Yeah. So, yeah, by putting out you know such a short very simple basic yeah. either strength or conditioning or, yeah. or mix then you, you can be sure that everyone will you know gain a bit of fitness yeah nobody would probably get injured due to the volume right 
So I think it's a, it's a safe way. And I, I think, think it's a safe way as well. I think they still believe that this is, if you want to just, you know, maintain or improve your fitness step by step, yep. you can follow CrossFit.com and you'll be good. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I actually, the gym that I flew to in Brisbane, I had a really good chat with the guy who owned it. And I said, you know, how often do you uh, put something like that on? And I talked to him about the class structure. And I think this is what's important to understand is it's a really short daily workout that they put there. CrossFit.com never, ever put their warm-up or their preparation no. for the workouts there. So when we, did, when, when, when we did jerks, when we did the doubles, six doubles or whatever it was of jerks, the class still took an hour. Yeah. It still took an hour. Why? Okay, we started out, and I remember it very well. There was an 800-meter run to warm up. And then he'd start with some, some shoulder mobility stuff. If you're going to jerk a lot, you need to have a lot of mobility. So what, there was a lot of what I'd call preparation. Yeah. So preparing a lot for the class. And it probably wasn't until 40 minutes into the class where I actually started doing those doubles. So, and then he'd make sure that when you did a double, so you'd work up to the weight. And then you do six, six of the doubles yeah. with a decent rest, fix some technique in between, and then go back. So actually the whole class still took an hour. So it really gave the coaches and the clients time to yeah. really work on every single detail. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and that's really, that's the thing. I mean, I, I can answer this question as to if, and I want to ask myself the question and, and then answer it for John. Like, why don't we do that? We don't do that because we don't believe it's, a, it's what people need. Yeah. We believe that they need something a little bit different. And that's why we do our program the way that we do. We spend 10 to 15 minutes warming people up. We focus of the five days a week, at least four. There's a, a heavy strength element. Yeah. And then our workout is actually super constantly varied. Like, okay, always Thursday, it's probably a bit longer. Yeah. But it'll be longer sometimes through intervals, sometimes through very short reps, sometimes through a very long reps, yeah. a chipper or something like that. So we keep it constantly varied. On, on that level but I think this question will go on forever to be honest with yeah. CrossFit.com and I mean no matter what, which gym you'll visit in the world it'll have a different different method different take because on it CrossFit right? is just such a yeah open open sport you know absolutely so but I, I, I think and that's why I still try and visit CrossFit.com frequently and I'll just I'll try and jump on there once a week and I think if you've got genuine interest if you're a coach or if you're an athlete or a wannabe athlete, there's more of those around, then you definitely need to be hopping over to CrossFit.com and, and just checking out what's going on. Some really cool ideas. Obviously, when they program, you know, eight singles of bench, I'm not really that interested in that. But when they program, I think we did a workout the other day. I did a workout with the Red Zone guys, which apparently was on CrossFit.com. Five rounds, 400 meter run. Yeah. 15 snatch, kettlebell snatch each hand. Super good workout. Really enjoyed it. You know, would that have been enough for a workout for the day? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, straight after it, we did a little bit of core work, some toes to bar, and that was that was done. I mean, I'd ridden yeah. a little bit in the morning, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a good workout. So I think there are some great workouts there. One thing I do like as well about CrossFit.com is they, from time to time, they will program things with, like, Atlas Stones and yeah. stuff like that. But most of the time... If you have a really basic gym, you can follow their program. They keep things simple. They keep they it don't super simple. Complicated. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully that helps yeah. for John. What else have we got there, mate? What's jumping out at you? There's some quite, I quite have, interesting questions kicking around. I have one that interests me. How can members best manage their rest and recovery if they still want to train five or six days at the gym? How should they be deloading, etc.? This is something I love to talk about. <laughs> Go on then, give us give us your fifty fills on it, mate. <laughs> I think rest and recovery is super important, and I definitely think that a lot of people neglect it and skip it. Like we have members that hit, you know, morning and evening and seven yeah. days a week, and they think that we coaches or in general very good athletes or athletes that train a lot, yeah, they never rest. Right. When I tell the members that we actually rest two days a week. Like what? Yeah, yeah. But that's not possible. It's like yes. Yeah. Because it's when you rest that the adaptations are happening. Yeah. Exactly. That's where you win. That's where you get all your gains. Yeah, exactly. Like you keep beating yourself up, but you need that time to recover and to make those adaptions. So the way you can 
approach this is to give yourself at least one full rest day. Don't come to the gym, spend some time right. with family, kids and friends, whatever. And then if you really want to train, you know, six days, then make one of those days a sort of active rest where you come in, maybe do some recovery work or some yeah. low heart rate stuff. Like right. a general, you know, application you could do would be less than heart rate below 120 beats per minute, yep. which would be like slightly jogging. You should be able to have a conversation. Yep. You know, it could be an easy swim since it's low compact yep. and those kind of things. Just get moving a bit. Yeah. Because if you're going hard those five days, you'll need complete rest. I think people need to start looking at things, what I would call a little bit more holistically. By smashing your body up and by, by being on the river, in the red, whatever you want to call it, like right at the top end of intensity, yes, you do get a lot of gains. But it's impossible to train at that level for two hours a day, seven days a week, yeah. and, and, and to maintain intensity. Like sometimes I'll start a, a session that's supposed to be super intense, and I can feel within the first few minutes if, I, if I'm ready for it or if I'm not ready for it, and if, if the body's recovered. So I think people need to understand how it works on that level. What I then ask myself is, okay, I'm going to have the day off tomorrow. What can I do to help my recovery so that the next time I train, I'm able to train at the intensity that the session demands? <clears throat> and, mate, I think you, you, you nailed it there. Like Something like just going for a swim, super different. You could maybe even do it with your boyfriend or girlfriend. You could just like make a morning of it or make an afternoon of it easy you don't need to take your goggles you don't need to time it but you're just moving around and you're just loosening things up i definitely pretty much on every not every single complete rest day but on most rest days i'll do 30 to 40 minutes of, of sort of just stretching flow style yoga training yep. just not Something, it does make me sweat, but it doesn't massively elevate my heart rate. And I just feel like I'm moving my muscles around. And I've tested it, actually, that if I have a full rest day without doing it, and then I have a rest day with 30 to 40 minutes of, of, that, of that movement, the next day I feel so much better with the movement. So I think, I think you're right, mate, is that you know we need to make sure that on those days... Because I think what, what generally what, what I've seen happens is that people... We'll take a rest day, and and this leads into another another uh, question here. Can you d guys discuss the concept of a cheat day? But <laughs> oh yes, they'll have a rest day, and they won't use it in a in a proactive way. No, food could be bad. Zero movement. So what's happening if you've trained super hard the day before? Zero sleep. Zero <laughs> sleep. And I think this puts people off a little bit. I think they think you know, oh, I actually feel worse after my rest day. Well, then you probably haven't had the right rest day yeah so yeah I, I think that's what i think that's what uh i think that's where knowing your body and knowing sort of how it reacts to things and then just testing things out and being a little bit geeky and a little bit scientific about it yeah um but i mean the question just going back to that question there how can members best manage their their rest and recovery if they still want to train five or six days at the gym and what what would you say what what's it like at Direct answer to that, mate. Sleep. Right. Sleep more. Sleep more. Make sure you get eight hours. Yep. It, like, if you don't get that already, yep. then sort that stuff out, and then we talk about the rest. Then right. you can worry about, you know, that movement flow on your rest day and yep. whatever. Like, right. First, make sure that you sleep enough. Right. Once that is covered, you can move on to, you know, making sure you get a few rest days, making sure that, you know, you eat properly, and especially on those rest days. I right. see the rest days as refuel and like yeah. even sleep more. Like if you can get 20 minute nap in on the days you don't train, especially also, and like you can get extra food in for me. Yeah. That's, that's where I make my gains or at least that's how I feel like <laughs> another, qu another one though, you know, question in the same line here was, you know, deloading. Yeah. I think that's where I wanted if, to go. Um, if you are an athlete that follows a competitive program, yep. you should definitely be making sure that you know about deloading. Yep. Um, just mo most people in competitive programs, they'll train once or twice a day. Yeah. There'll be a lot of intensity, a lot of volume, a lot of everything, and you got to make sure that you're deloading. Yeah. You're deloading your system, which is basically just, you know, it could be three, four days, it could be a week yep. with low intensity, more practice than training. Yep. Um, it could be just... 
you know, low heart rate skill work, just moving, making sure your CNS gets a break, your body gets a break so that you feel even more hungry yep. to come back to training. So it's, right. it's both physical and mental break. Yeah. And if you don't know what deload is and you haven't had any training yet, yeah. then take one <laughs> yeah. and see how you feel. And no, you won't lose your gains. Like yeah. This period of time will be really good for you. The Chinese lifters, the, gym, the yeah. pro gymnasts, in it. any professional sport, they do it. And I think in CrossFit, we're slowly opening our eyes. And I mean, that can apply, you've spoken a little bit there from, from, a, from a competitive athlete standpoint. I want to bring that back down into what this question is really, like how can members, how should they be deloading? It's exactly the same. Like if, if, if you come in on a, on, on a Sunday morning and it's, you've decided that that week it's, you're, you're on a deload week or you're just taking it easy and it's one rep max back squat, then don't do a one rep. Go up to the coach and just say, "Listen, I'm just taking a little bit easy this week. Don't do that one rep max back squat." But you're gonna you're gonna back squat that bar. Uh, t- you're gonna go up to it six to eight times. Yeah. Just maybe do sets of four reps with a little bit of time at the bottom, with not even fifty percent of what your max is on the bar. Yeah. So Leave you're your just ego. creating. Yeah. Who cares? What are you doing? I'm just. I'm. I'm on a relaxed week, but I'm here. I'm moving because I know that's good for me. I don't have to blow myself out of the water. Yeah. And then the workout comes up, and it's it's something that – let's take something nice and straightforward. You know, it's just it's just 10 thrusters, 10 toes to the bar, five rounds. Again, you might go lighter on the thrusters, and you might just do some knee raises instead of the toes to the bar. I know you can do the toes to the bar, but I don't want to put your shoulder under that big pressure. I don't want you to do the full movement and just take it easy. It doesn't matter. I think one of the biggest things that, that you said there, mate, is, is ego. Just leave the, the ego behind. Yeah. And, you know, I think if you go up to the coach and you sort of start to so, start to have that conversation with a coach, and especially if we can see that the previous week you really did empty the tank, or we, we, we can see fluctuations in people's performances yeah so if we can see that your your sort of performance is down then of course we're going to say yeah absolutely if you come and you're constantly are oh, deload and oh, not feeling good and you've just been an absolute pussy then you know i'm <laughs> you're probably going to get some uh, equal treatment back but uh I th- that's the way that i would look at it if, if you're a member and for most people deload comes naturally through holidays or business or whatever right like we for example, we see here a lot of clients traveling a lot for business. They won't be able to train yep. in that place in LB because they'll be super busy or whatever excuse there is. Yeah. Naturally, you'll probably have those deloads coming. Yeah. Yeah, they, um, they come, right? Like yeah, absolutely. If I go on s- summer holiday yeah. for two weeks, yeah, that's naturally like I know that that deload is coming. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you don't need to book it always like that. Yeah, absolutely. You just... You, they're going to come, you know, yeah. and especially like, like you said there, Andre, like people in this part of, of, of the world, they're traveling for business. You know, you're going to be in Saudi Arabia for four days, pick up a program, send me an email, I'll, uh, send me an email, winning and a flight.com. I'll send you a, a, a session that I do pretty much every morning that takes about half an hour and that will help you. You can do it in your hotel room. It's on YouTube. I'll send it out to you. It's, you're going to have to deal with me talking, but you listen to the show. So you're all right with that. <laughs> Mate, Following on from that, what <laughs> can you guys discuss the concept of a cheat day? Cheat day. I'm about to put my microphone down and you get out. <laughs> what does it look like, mate? Like, well, I think a, a lot of people have different, uh, different philosophies of what a cheat day actually is. Like, for me, a cheat day would be having, for example, extra dessert or something like that or just even a dessert because nat- normally I don't have dessert because it just doesn't come natural to me. I, I think it can be, be dangerous to have that concept of a cheat day because for most people, that day just, you know, gets crazy and they they end up, you know, eating cheat day. It's, to cheat day starts 6 a.m. in the morning, ends 10 p.m. in the evening, <laughs> and they just fill themselves with crap all day. Yeah. So I think if you really have a cheat day, it should be a lot less volume. I mean, it could be just be for dinner. You know, if you want to have a dessert afterwards, go for that. But don't go too crazy because you can seriously get set back in one day. I think that's, a, that's the main thing, mate, is that, A, we've, we call it a cheat day. 
So people wake up in the morning and just hammer into the pancakes, chocolate milk, blah, 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 blah. And, and B, I think really the application, and I could go on. Uh, pizza for lunch, burgers for dinner, but like feel just terrible. We've had some few, pretty few, cool stories here few, about cheat meals. A few beers chucked in there and whatever you want. I think really the concept of a cheat day for me is a reward for doing well. It goes back a little bit to, to, to motivation. A lot of people that I've helped to lose a lot of weight, I'll say to them, at the start, you're going to have one meal. And we're going to look forward to it. And you're going to tell me, if you're having it on Friday or Saturday on the weekend, you're going to tell me on Tuesday what it is. You're going to really look forward to it. And you're going to build up this emotion and you're going to eat it and you're going to super enjoy it. And then it's gone and we're looking forward to the next week. So the concept is that the concept is a reward for eating super well and maybe having something that you wouldn't have on a daily basis. How much of that bad thing that you have depends on where you're at. For sure, for someone like you, you could wake up, you could have pancakes, you could have the pizza, you could have the burgers, and you could have the milkshakes. And the next day, you could probably jump on the scales and be exactly the same because you're training for three or four hours a day. Your metabolism is on fire. And you have about 6% body fat. For someone who is at 35 to 40% body fat, the chances of me saying, yep, you can have a whole day off is, is a lot different. You'll so gain five kilos. You, you will gain. Yeah. yeah I've seen can. it <laughs> several times. You literally can. So I think that's really, that's really the concept. It's, you know, we understand that as humans, we like to have the forbidden fruit that's been since, since the start of time. And we want to, we like some of the stuff. Some of the stuff tastes super good, you yeah. know, and, and there's, no, there's no two ways about it. A lot of people have a sweet tooth. Some people like to use alcohol. So, like, there's all different vices, and we, without going into those, they, we should be using them as somehow rewards or, or relaxation. So depending on when you're at, I think the, num- the amount that you take in in a day should be really quite sort of, well, it should be monitored to, to where you're at. One thing I will say about where, when people are traveling and they are traveling around the region. And this is why I see a lot, it's more with guys because for some reason, ladies don't seem to have jobs that travel so much and it's harder to travel to Saudi Arabia or whatever. Um, they would eat not so cleanly when they're traveling. Oh, I had to go out to dinner with clients. I had some this or there was a traditional sweets. And then they'll come back and they'll still have a cheat day or a cheat meal. Because it doesn't count when you're out of the country. It doesn't count when you're <laughs> out. Of the, does it count in Saudi Arabia? Does it count? Like it doesn't count because it was at work. It doesn't count because, you know what I mean? If I say to you, you can have one cheat meal, you can have one dessert a week. Like I don't give a rat's if it's your boss's birthday and he's trying to fire you because you're not having some of his, his chocolate cake. You have it. That's your cheat meal for that week. Like it's done. Yeah. So so be very careful. And that's why I get people to just make a commitment, right, on Saturday or Sunday. I'm going to focus. I'm going to work towards it. And then I'm going to have my cheat meal. And I think that's where, I think that's where people's heads need to be out on it. But yeah. it's not a cheat day in many, many situations. No. It's, it's a meal. That pretty much sums it up. Yeah. I think that, that, that wraps up. Um, staying on food, mate, I wanted to just jump into this one because it's, it's, it's quite interested. I uh, Interesting from one of our loyal listeners, Fatma. She says, I started intermittent fasting as part of my diet and would like to know your thoughts on it and about Bulletproof Coffee when doing the intermittent fast. This is thoughts. something you are big on. <laughs> I know. So there's a couple of different things here. I, I believe there is a big benefit in, in, in intermittent fasting. Yeah. Can you explain uh, just yeah, sort of the t- easy. The, the, sim- the simplest way is 16 hours of no eating a day. Yeah. So you finish finish eating in the, in, in the evening and you eat mid-morning to late morning the next day. Yeah. Some people like to finish at 6 and some people like to finish eating at 8. I listened to a super interesting podcast recently that the most beneficial intermittent fasts are actually you stop eating when it's still daylight. Yeah. So you don't actually eat during the hours of darkness. So in Dubai at the moment, it's getting dark at 6.37. So you just eat before that. And then obviously you, you'd go for 16 hours. So we're looking at about 16-hour fast yep. from food. The only thing that you should really be having is water. Why is that? Because we don't want any 
reaction. We don't want any enzymes flowing through your body during that fast. So that means, and this is almost the second part of the the, the, the question here, yeah. is bulletproof coffee, I would say, for most people, should be out. I have used coffee during intermittent fasting, and I have done it without. What I will say is that it's easier with, but that's essentially breaking your fast. You're putting coffee into your body. You start to have chemical reactions. Enzymes start to flow in your body. You Coffee coffee helps your metas- metabolism yeah. speed up. It's, the whole idea is that you, you don't. You don't. Yeah, yeah, that's why it's called fasting. Yeah. If, if it was called fasting but coffee, no, it's called fasting. So I, I really like it, mate. I like it for um, resetting insulin sensitivity. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen some, some benefits in that. I some people are able to maintain it long term. I did it for five months and then I stopped because I wasn't feeling as alert as I did at the start. Yeah. So what I would say to people is, you know, if you're going to do some intermittent fasting, maybe do it with with some goals in mind. Can I guarantee that you'll lose weight on it? No. Uh, I have seen a lot of people lose some weight quite quickly from it. You're, you're in a great situation. Training is absolutely fine. These are the questions that normally get. Can yeah, I, can training train? is quite interesting. Yeah. Like fasting, especially because, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people just eat a lot of food and then they go training and like all the blood will be, you know, in their in their stomach time trying to digest the food instead right. of being out in the muscles where it needs to be to, you know, to perform optimally. Yeah. So if you're doing intermittent fasting and you want to train in the morning, there's absolutely no problem doing that. Not a problem at all. Uh, for the first few days, you'll feel that your energy levels are, let's say, slightly lower, and that's potentially, normal. because obviously you haven't got up and had a cake or you haven't got up and had hopefully some dates and some nuts. But you, you, you would feel that your your energy levels are slightly lower. But after two or three days when your body gets used to it, I actually used to feel like I had a plenty of energy and I would train 10 o'clock till 12 o'clock yeah so I had absolutely no issues with that um I think it only lasts for a certain amount of time and that's why I say maybe just go 30 days or maybe even and I know this is something that Jonesy does quite often he would fast for one or two days a week so he'll just pick it and he'll just say okay tomorrow I'm not gonna eat till lunchtime and he actually quite enjoys that as well and he has about 2% body fat. So <laughs> I've heard Tim Ferriss talk about this as well, both intermittent fasting and like full days of fasting. Yeah. Like yeah. He'll, he'll pick out a few days a month and he'll just fast completely. Yeah. And there's a lot more health benefits than just, you know, losing weight. There's yeah quite a lot of complicated stuff also, including like, you know, preventing cancer. Yeah, and like it's all over that. I'm not over a specialist in that, but yeah. there's plenty of stuff. So if you're really interested in the fasting world, you should definitely... Yeah, Tim Ferriss know, is a good resource. The Tools of Titans have like yeah. plenty of pages just talking with specialists about inter- intermediate fasting. You yeah. can also listen to his podcast. And I remember the, when I first met uh, Mike Marler, who we had on the show, the a vegan yeah. guy from, from the States. Um, whenever he would teach a seminar, he would never eat on that morning he would teach the whole day seminar fasted. He uh, would have, an, and this is... Aggressive attitude? Water. Aggressive <laughs> attitude. <laughs> <laughs> he has an aggressive attitude. But he, he would have a, a one or two coffees. So I know that goes that's against what I just said before. So he's not fully fasted, but he's generally, he's not eating the whole day. So he quite likes it. One of the things that I really warn people about, just because you're intermittent fasting it doesn't mean that all of the work is done in those 16 hours and in the eight hours that you can eat, you can be a complete sort of pig and just eat crap. And that, that's what I see, mate, because people are fasted for 16 hours and then they just eat terribly. One good thing and one, one thing that I, I, I read a lot, the, the renegade diet, this is super cool because it brings you out of the fast in a in a very controlled way of what's going to work best for your body. That, that would be another resource that I, I would suggest people have a look at. He believes he believes in a cup of coffee, um, but I think if you're going in, in, in a fast and you're in, a, you're in a total fast, you're 16 hours, I would try it initially with nothing but water. So that's my thoughts. Be careful when you break your fast, what you eat. Remember why you're doing it as well, and then just fluctuate around with it. Some people roll it a bit, so just figure out what's going to work best with for you. But I think that's a uh, I think that's a super 
I think it's a super good uh, tool yep. that's available for people. Hope that answers your question. Absolutely. What else have we got that you like the look of there, mate? Um, there's a pretty typical one that I've seen a lot of people struggle with. It's, I have a problem with my squat. My hip shifts to the right at the bottom of the squat. How do I fix that? You're the man to answer it. So it's not, you know, everyone would be different. And, you know, it's hard to just give a specific answer on this, what this hip shift happens due to. It could be, you know... Stability in, you know, either your angle, knee, or hip joint. It could be a atrophy of your muscles on each side, which created, like, a little hip tilt. Um, there can be quite a lot of different things, you know, like if one foot is tilting in or whatever. So you would actually have to have a coach or a movement specialist or, you know, a physio or something like that to, to do a proper movement assessment on you to to, to really locate where, where the problem happens. Right. Um, I've had this problem myself, and I've been doing a lot of we call it squat therapy, and um, we've been trying to fire both my adductors and abductors. So it's like the side of your hip, the inner, inner, inner side of your hip, basically. You know, the things that lift your legs out to the side and brings it back in. Yeah. Um, you can get your abductors firing by putting a band around your knees, squatting yep. down, slow, slowing up and down. Yeah. Usually by doing that. You, automatically this hip hip tilt would get fixed so i'll do that every day in my warm-up right. um another one is you lay on the side with your feet up against the wall with a foam roller in between your legs yeah and you try to switch your hips forward and back so kind of like you want to grind the foam roller between your legs so you make it roll by shooting you know your left hip forward and pulling your right hip back and opposite just, you know, gaining a bit more mobility in those hips might, you know, help it out because it might be because one of either one side of your hip is too stiff or so. Um, so there can be quite a lot of different, um, you know, approaches and how to fix it. But I would definitely recommend, first of all, slowing your movements down to see where it actually happens. Where do you feel it in the movement? Is it is it because you're just going super fast and you, you, you don't even, even know what's happening in your squat? Or is it because there is actually a problem like you, your hips are just tilted from the beginning? Right. right. Um, so definitely go see somebody who can assess you. Jump on, your, jump on your mobility program, mate. Yeah. You can, would you, that, be, that would be something that that's one of the main things that you'd have a quick look at? Easy. Or not a quick yeah, look that's at? That's actually like, the first movement I'll look at is right. a regular stand squats. Yeah. Super slow down and up, like five reps. We'll go a narrow stand squat. We'll go sumo stand squat. Right. Like when I've looked at those three, I can quickly determine sort of what I assume is the problem. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I might be wrong in my first assumption. Right. And with 20, 30 other movements we have you doing, I might realize that it, the problem comes from a whole other place. Else, yeah. Um, we can only make assumptions. We can never really say that. This is 100% because of that. Right. Um, yeah. Easy peasy. Mate, some quick questions. We'll just plow through and then we'll finish up with one that's maybe a little bit more long-winded. I think this one we've, we've kind of answered, but let's just get a short answer to it. After a hard workout, especially that's leg intense, I feel the need of two to three days to recover. Is this normal? How can I speed up my recovery? How should I fit this into class? I think we, we got through that with uh, hopefully the, the question that we answered earlier quite long-windedly, how can members best manage their rest and recovery? You know, if you need two or three days to recover, it's not normal. So I'd first check nutrition, sleep, which we spoke about, yeah. and fit this into the class. Just be a little bit careful. Like if, if you, you know, if your legs are, are super sore or it's very leg intense and one at max, that's what comes up the next day, just chill. If it's your first session, it's normal to be sore, like, yeah. after two or three days. Like, don't worry about that. If you just started training, you've never trained before, and yeah. or you just jumped into CrossFit, yeah, it is completely normal to be very sore. Yeah. If you've been training CrossFit for a year, and you randomly just get super sore... For no reason. For no reason, there's probably something wrong in, like... In your tra in your recovery yeah. part, take a couple of days off, or or drop us an email, write to one of the coaches, speak to one of the coaches, and they might be able to look at three or four days of what you've been doing and maybe yeah. give you some advice on that. Yeah. 
This one keeps on coming up. I'm not sure if we answered it in the last show, but it's again being asked, and it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek. If you're a vegan that does CrossFit, which do you tell people first? God only knows, but there we go. We've answered it. Can't, any, can't have anyone complaining. This question I can answer positively. Are there any plans to do strongman training within the gym? Yes. Stay tuned. You will see it coming very soon. I'm not saying anything else. If you stay <laughs> tuned, you will see it coming very soon. And can you give me examples of how programming and its training has changed for you personally? I'm not sure if this is me personally or you yeah. personally. The gym and CrossFit as a whole. I think that really ties into what we were saying at the start with the CrossFit.com workouts. Things have changed. I think for us personally, Andre, we change our training based on, I would say, based on our goals and based on our progress. If something's working, we keep doing it. And if yeah. not, we stop. Exactly. <laughs> and w another one, a quick one. This again came through Instagram. Thanks a lot, Christopher James. 1989 is his Instagram name. You want to go and check him out. Uh, recovery. He wants us to talk about recovery and getting back into training after being hit with a serious viral infection. I think you covered that really, mate. Take it nice and easy. Yeah, slow especially at the start. with intensity. Yeah. Like we see people going down with a cold or something yeah. bad. And they think they're okay, and they come back, and then they just do a super high-intensity <laughs> workout. They just fries the whole system. Yeah, yeah. And they get just even more sick. So Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's unless until you definitely come back in the gym once the germs have gone and you're not going to give it to anyone. Otherwise, just stay at home and do your workouts at home. But come back in the gym and do something a little bit more straightforward. And because you, your immune system, even if you feel great, your immune system might still be down. Yeah. So final question, mate. I left this one to last because I think it's quite interesting. As CrossFit and Inner Fight branches out, we are seeing some more versions. CrossFit Endurance, CrossFit Strongman. We run your mobility program. CrossFit Mobility. CrossFit Mobility. Andre, Inner Fight Mobility. We also have stuff like gymnastics specialty class. We just mentioned it there. We have a strongman specialty class. We have a weightlifting specialty class. We actually have a whole, well, our own endurance section. So these guys are asking, what is next? Any thoughts, mate? CrossFit Swimming. CrossFit Swimming? Yep. I have a feeling. You have a feeling? I mean, no. for, 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 but mate, it, it makes absolute sense. I don't know why it actually hasn't been done. You've got CrossFit. You, there's one CrossFit specialty course called CrossFit Striking. Oh, which yeah. Which basically, these guys. Self defense and stuff like that. It's awful. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. Yeah, I've heard about that. Uh, Brian McKenzie's just kind of the guy who sort of invented, should we say, CrossFit Endurance, which a lot of, in my personal opinion, a lot of these, like, I don't know what the striking one is, but I know like some of them are just add-ons for the sake of add-ons. I heard some opinion. of them are just good friends with Greg Glassman, yeah. and they ask him if they can grade that, and boom, boom, boom. Brian McKenzie now has a breathing course. That is interesting. Yeah, so you can go on his breathing course. CrossFit breathing. I don't know if it's a CrossFit breathing, but it's basically a breathing course. So he will teach you how to breathe. That is one topic we'll be discussing in the future. Yeah. Okay, that's a big one yeah it's a big one and i know you're uh, you're super super well read on it and, and actually using a lot of different practices as well mate yeah another another one that i what i think is next and what i'm definitely seeing is I, the crossfit endurance course for me if anyone's done it i don't know didn't really teach me too much or really anything it's a two-day yeah. course didn't teach me anything about endurance it taught me about how to it taught me about how to assess people's running style, but I still had to go away and do a, a lot of research on my own okay. for that. But I do see, I, I see it with, I see it here with Carmen has a bike now. Phil was in a duathlon recently. These guys that are, are, are sort of trying to go at, at CrossFit at a high level, you also swim a lot. I do see, I think we've got it pretty much down pat. We understand how to get people to do thrusters faster. We understand pe how to get people stronger faster. We don't, yet understand or we understand or some people understand the requirement for more endurance based training yeah. and i think that's going to come a, 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 a lot stronger it definitely comes in i'm seeing a movement within our business we have a lot of people who who do the crossfit classes but also want endurance programming actually have some meetings after i finish this with guys that want marathon programs that want triathlon programs and we're seeing our our triathlon business or our endurance business want to run a marathon want to do this and that grow 
pretty pretty yeah. strong. So I would say that's that's where it's going. And what I what I really like is that people are using what we're teaching them through CrossFit or through functional strength and conditioning, and then taking that out into into those other sports. Yep, that's what I think's next. <laughs> Agree. I think we pretty much summed it up there. Yeah, we've got. Uh, there's quite a few decent questions there. So hopefully, everyone that that chucked in a question has it answered. And Please keep sending new questions. We're coming. super happy to answer more questions, whether it's you know on the podcast or just over a, a DM on Instagram or Absolutely. Facebook. Yeah. Just um, shoot us a message, and we'll do our best to answer. There we go. That has been the listener Q and A. Plenty of stuff to go at. That was episode number 350, another milestone in our podcasting history. Andre, until next time, you take care.